Hi, I'm Federico with Cuddle, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make one of these polygon boxes. We made a template that lets you choose the number of sides, which means you can make things like a triangular box or a hexagonal box or even a seven-sided one like this one. These are great as pencil holders or planter holders or even as little lamps. There are many ways to customize them. So first, I'm going to walk you through all the options on the template. I'm going to share a couple of tips and tricks, and then I'm going to show you how to assemble the box. So let's get started. You will find a link to this template in the video description. Once I'm here in the project page, I'm going to scroll down to see all the different options we can change. Everything in this gray box on the right hand side is for you to customize. And in order to change any of the numbers, we can click and scrub to the right to increase the number or scrub to the left to decrease it. Another way to change anything is to click and actually type the specific number that we want. So for example, I can type 3.25 inches and press enter to confirm. Let's review the options starting from the top. So the way this box is constructed is that we have a regular polygon that is the base and the top, and these two polygons are joined by the faces. The number of sides here are the number of sides of that regular polygon. The lower limit for the number of sides would be three, as we can make a cool looking triangular box. But then you'll see that if we start increasing the number of sides, the more or regular polygon approximates a cylinder. So I think around 20 sides, you have a very circular looking box and then you have a lot of parts to assemble. I think in general with this template, you would be making boxes between three and about 12 sides. But I think there's a lot of variety to explore even within those numbers. For this example, I want to try a six sided box. So I'm going to uh, select six. The diameter is how big that base polygon is. Specifically, it is actually a circle that would be perfectly contained inside this polygon, touching all the sides. So in the case of this hexagon, for example, the diameter is the distance between these two flat sides. So just to be clear, this particular diameter refers to the outside of the box, not to the inside opening. We'll get to that one in a moment. I think for this example, I want to make this one three and a half inches. I'm going to type it and press enter. The height in turn refers to the outside height of the box as measured from the very bottom to the very top of the box. And as you can see, when I change the number, the, this mostly affects the side of the faces. And I think for this example, I want to have a two and a half inch uh, tall box. The material thickness is going to affect the joints in between the faces and the base. And for this, I recommend that you measure your material thickness with calipers. And if your material has any masking tape, uh, do remove it because that's going to affect it. Um, we did a longer video exploring in detail how this affects the joints. So I'm going to leave a link to that in the description and over here in the corner. But also we can get a quick visual on how this works. If I increase the material thickness, you'll see how these tabs are going to get longer and then these holes are going to get bigger to accommodate it. Uh, for the material that I'm going to be using here, I'm going to enter the thickness as 0.122 inches. For a deeper explanation on curve compensation, I'm going to refer you to the video I mentioned before. Uh, here in short, I'm just going to say that in general, for most people, the default curve compensation uh, seems to work really well. But if you need to make any changes, then it would be a matter of like trial and error and you would make very small adjustments and then do a test. So those small adjustments would be as small as like you know, that amount if you need to make it tighter or this amount if you need to make it looser, then you would cut a test and try it out. So it's very trial and error. For this example, I'm going to leave it as the default for myself. This template will let you select whether you want this component on the right. And that's uh, an additional top cover you can glue to hide these finger joints. You can simply check or uncheck the box whether you want it or not. I think this box is good to go as is, uh, but I'm just going to show you one of these advanced options that I can expose by clicking this toggle right here. I can change the look and size of the opening, so I can change it to circular or the rounded polygon. And if I want a very specific size for the opening, I can uncheck this auto size and then I can change the diameter. Just be careful that if you do that, you, wanna, you don't want to disturb these joints. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it as the default. And when I'm ready to cut it, I'm going to click my blue button to download an SVG. And I'm going to cut these and show you what it looks like. Here are all the pieces. And the first thing we're going to do is place these sides onto the base. 
we don't need these for now and I'm gonna arrange all the sides around the base to place them in order. This is the easy part, we only need to place all the faces onto the matching slots. Sometimes wiggling the piece a little bit helps to get it to go in. To place the top, start by making sure it's aligned with at least one slot in this case the bottom one, and then go around wiggling individual faces while applying some pressure to the top. Try and be patient and work around until all of the faces fall in place. And to finish it, you can tap it lightly with a mallet to make sure the joints are flush. And finally, we can glue this optional cover on top of the box to give it a clean look. I'm using super glue to make it quick and I'm just making sure that cover is well aligned. And I ended up with a sturdy and good looking hexagonal box. Before I let you go though, I want to mention that there is a really cool variation of this box and everything we just talked about, including the assembly, applies to it equally. So on this page, I can scroll down and you'll see a link to this variation. And it's this polygon box with a mandala pattern. The basic options and the assembly are the same. So everything I've shown you so far applies to this one, except we get this really cool decoration on the faces of the box. I'm going to scroll down to show you. And additionally, if you want to change the look of that pattern, you can expose this advanced uh, dialog right here. And that would let you play with the thickness of the lines and the number of repetitions for the uh, base motif that creates the pattern. So I encourage you to take a look at this one too. I feel like I was pleasantly surprised by a couple of things with this project. On one side, I think by changing just a few numbers, I end up with very different objects uh, with very different uses. And that's cool. That's a, a very versatile template in some ways. The other cool thing is that these things are super solid and sturdy. I didn't realize they were going to be like that, even though I didn't put any glue on the joints. Um, the last thing is that I feel like most uh, laser cutting projects that want to be three dimensional end up with faces at 90 degree angles by necessity. But by making polygons, I feel like you break that rule and you end up with a cool, very slick looking object. Additionally, I think this box is very customizable. We only released this one version, but I think there is a lot to explore there. So if you want to see more of that or you want to learn how to do it, please leave us a comment. Uh, you can also help the channel by clicking like and subscribing. And I hope you found something surprising or amusing in this video. And thank you so much for watching.